Good evening and welcome to our second concert of the season. Let's applaud for that. It's so wonderful to see actual human beings. Um, for those of you who were experiencing the concerts last year, it was not quite the same when it was a completely empty room and I was making this exact same announcement to the camera. But for those of you who are watching online, we still welcome you and are thrilled that you're able to join us. So welcome to St. Paul's in Westfield. I'm Mark Hitchko. I'm the artistic director of Steeple Concert Series as well as the music director in this lovely church. So we are so excited to be here presenting a wonderful pianist, Min Kwan, as she presents her amazing program, America Beautiful. I hope you had a chance to read a little bit about that and read a, bit, a little bit about Ms. Kwan. Uh, she's a phenomenal pianist. She's going to talk about the works. You'll notice there's not a program order. So she's going to talk a lot about the actual program, what it is, what's inspired her to do it, and the composers who she's representing. So it's a really unusual and fascinating and unique project. And I, you guys are really part of history here that you're able to hear this live. So it's a really exciting moment in the musical history of this church as well as American composition in general. So um, you'll notice this lovely piano that we have here. Um, Ms. Kwan is a Steinway artist, and so this piano has been graciously provided to us by Steinway artists. Speaking of support, this entire concert series would not exist without generous support from viewers like you. Um, so you've probably heard that if you've ever watched PBS ever, um, there's a lot of truth to that. This could not happen from ticket sales alone. Look around here, you can imagine just the number of people here buying tickets would not cover the cost of the cartage of getting the Steinway here. So um, please consider making a donation to support this wonderful series and the work that we do here. Um, you'll notice a list of sponsors uh, in our program. Um, we thank all of them for their generosity and we want to add you to that list. So please consider making a donation. You can buy us a Steinway, that's a good start. Um, or stocks, or gold, bullion, we'll take any form of donation. Or, honestly, no donation is too small. Any degree of support is critical towards making this a success. So uh, do consider making a donation. You can do that online via our website, steepleconcerts.org. I'm sure Kevin in the back will be very happy to talk to you about how you can consider supporting us via check or credit or any other options. So. Um, Thank you all for being here, and thank you to the vestry and uh, staff of St. Paul's Church for allowing us to be here, and of course our uh, intrepid rector, Duncan Johnston, who is here as well. So we thank you all for your support in making this a reality. I know you guys aren't here to talk about uh, the, uh, th this type of stuff. You want to hear some good music, but just a quick note. Please make sure your phones are off. And it's an easy thing to forget since we're out of practice because it's been about a year and a half since we've done this. So just turn off your phones, make sure they're on silent or on stun, and uh, we'll enjoy the concert. So without any further ado, I'll present Ms. Kwan, Min Kwan playing America Beautiful.
you. Wow, good afternoon. How wonderful it is to see you in this beautiful space. Thank you very much for having me. And what a privilege it is to be able to share this program. And thank you for choosing to spend your afternoon with me here. Um, so you just heard a piece that's called, have you noticed that I wasn't playing my left hand? It's, it's a bit strange because it's like I'm a little bit off balance. But that was a very humorous um, reference and response to my call, please write me something, um, Variation on America the Beautiful. So you recognize the, the theme there, right? And this was by John Harbison, and he very cleverly calls it getting the upper hand of America. So that was just a one of 75 pieces that I've commissioned. It was kind of my pandemic project. And the, the motivation comes from the fact that, you know, everything was still. There was a lot of stagnant energy. We were all waiting for something better to happen whenever we turned the news. There was more devastating news after another. And of course, performing artists, any creative people, all our work has stopped. And I just felt like we needed to create something new, new energy, new hope in time of crisis. And America was in crisis. And when I called up these composers, they are really America's who's who. Uh, Pulitzer Prize winners, Grammy winners, Emmy winners, Rome Prize winners. Um, a lot of the response was, but why? America is not beautiful. And I said, that is exactly why we have to write about it, think about it, and express it. And I wanted the future generation of not only musicians or audiences to look back upon this time, 2020, as not just period of death and challenges, but period that America Beautiful was born. Um, so hopefully I get to sample, show you selections that really um, is about diversity and there's a tremendous range of different styles, aesthetics, and technical challenges. And you know, it's really fascinating to see how the same melody um, brought about such different responses and different sounds, and what is really capable of this instrument. You know? so, so please um, go on this journey with me. Um, and if you're curious, you can always go to america-beautiful.com. I have premiered them virtually um, on July 4th, starting with July 4th that whole week. So the pieces are up there on YouTube. Um, and it's still continuing because I'm still receiving pieces and we're revising them and playing them better, hopefully. And so there are many, many more plans to play them live and also to record and film them. Um, and as you can imagine, a lot of the pieces were dark and sad and somber. I chose not to bring too many of those pieces for you today <laughs> because we have to also move forward. Um, how about start with a group of pieces that, that's about beauty and hope and a lot of optimism during difficult time. So this is um, Libby Larson, who is a female composer based in Minnesota. She wrote a piece called Amber. And you can really imagine, you know, the amber, the breeze. Um, I filmed some of the pieces on the hilltop in summer, Somerset. And this was really perfect piece for it. I'll follow that with uh, Taksu Kim, just um, recently naturalized American citizen, born in Korea. He wrote America the Beautiful, but the Polarized. And there are actually two versions. So the piano part is very, very beautiful. And then he also wrote a string quartet. And I could not bring a string quartet with me today, so you will only hear the beautiful version. But the string quartet part is supposed to attack this beauty. And it's actually very fascinating. Um, and then I will finish this set perhaps with a young Indian American based in California, Rina Esmail. And she wrote America slash dash. Interestingly, in Indian, I understand the country and the people, it's the same word. And that's dash. So it's a beautiful kind of interplay of the two cultures that she was born in and that she has adopted. Enjoy.
Should I leave this on the whole time? Mark is going to kill me. <laughs> but sound was okay, right? Would, did we get a feedback? Okay. Um, so that was three very beautiful, America beautiful rendition, which helps us to reflect, you know. Um, and so I'm going to just slightly jump to maybe not so beautiful, but somewhat dark, because we did go through those times, and I think it's a very valid and very eloquent statement as well of our composers. So um, next three is by Jessica Meyer, another wonderful young um, female based in Brooklyn. And she wrote something called Hatsion Skies. And she herself was vacationing and was inspired by the same words that inspired uh, our lyricist. Um, and then I'll follow that with Kenji Bunch, who is normally a fun country jazz type of writing that he does, but he's based in Oregon. And he wrote something very beautiful called Beauty for All or For None at All. And a little note that says distraught, but not defeated. And I think a lot of us can relate to this feeling last year. And then um, I'm going to follow that with, oh, Cadiz um, by David Ludwig, who is actually a good friend of mine. And he's the newly appointed the dean of Juilliard School. And he wrote a Jewish prayer. And you know, all the sonorities in these three pieces are going to be very different. But it's astonishing how, how it hits us emotionally in the same place, our soul. And in this Jewish prayer, he wrote this in honor of uh, Justice Ruth Ginsburg when she passed away last year. So here are three pieces, Jessica Meyer, Kenji Bunch, and David Ludwig.
On? Yeah. Thank you for your beautiful attention. Oh my goodness. You know, um, you make the concert. You know that. So I get inspiration from the space, the piano, of course, but from my audience. And the fun thing about this particular program is that you have, I think we only actually put maybe 60, not even 75. There was no space for it in the program. But um, you have a homework there. You have the entire list today that I am choosing the pieces from. And often I decide on the spot or change the order of it. Um, I'm getting the feel from you. And so you've um, now journeyed through the contemplative part of the program, I think. Um, and I was testing you. <laughs> <laughs> but oh my god, beautiful silence and attention. You felt it too, right? And it really um, helps the music to speak, you know? I think the music doesn't have to be all loud and fast, you know, to, to drive us. I know young people would disagree, but um, some beautiful stuff there. Okay, I promise um, we'll have some fun now. I like to play a father and son duo. Um, so father's name is Terry Riley, and if you know music, and if you Google Terry Riley in C, especially this piece made history. So Terry Riley is about, I want to say, 83. He's, he's living in the mountains of Japan, away from the chaos of, of past couple of years. And I tracked him down, you know, but he's someone that I grew up studying about. Every music book, history, would talk about Terry Riley. And once I was in Europe, I want to say it's France, and it was a museum of sound and music, and there was an entire floor dedicated to American composer, father of minimalism, Terry Riley. So you can imagine how psyched I was when, when he answered my call, and he said, OK, I will write a piece for you. And of course, I expected him being the father of minimalism. I, you know, Terry Riley in C, I think it's comprised of you repeating the C, and you actually hear the reference in the piece, and you just repeat that in so many different patterns. But when he sent me the music, it was not four bars. It was not even 40 bars. It was a 220 measures. And he, he has written the longest of the set. Um, so if you notice, uh, the, the pieces range from anywhere from three minutes to now with Terry Riley, 11 minutes. Um, so I'm, I'm a rich girl. You know, it was like a Christmas getting these pieces come in. Um, and his son, who's about 40, and he's a guitar player, not classical, and he plays in different clubs, and he's, he's wonderful in his own way. So you will hear these two pieces. Um, I'll play the son's piece first, which is called Indoor, and it symbolizes what he wanted to tell Americans we just have to endure through good and bad. And Terry Riley wrote something more cheeky, fun, a reference to American rag, and he called it the crown of brotherhood. So I hope you enjoy Riley, father and son.
do whatever you want. <laughs> Just as long as you use the mic. All right, okay. Um, so that was a lot of fun. How do you feel about taking maybe a little bit more intellectual um, journey into what modern composers are writing? So I promised you at the beginning, you will hear a lot of different range of pieces. Isn't that great? And this piano is, is working with me very... Thank you, Steinway. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to take you now to uh, two composers that's very much in demand. They've, between two of them, they won every award possible for American um, contemporary music. First is Sebastian Courier. He used to be a professor at Columbia, but I think he, he quit in order to dedicate full time to composing. And he wrote me not one variation, but 23 variations. One was not enough. But they are very, very short, and they are amazing sort of study of different things. You know, the variation means that you either take the rhythm, harmony, or melody, or any component from the original theme. So here, I think it would be fun for you to listen to how did he take, and he often uses these. You know how the America the Beautiful starts? So that melodic pattern, you want to look for that. And I think also it might be fun for you to see when one variation goes to the ne next one. So you know, count 23 and see if I'm doing it right, if I skipped anything. Um, but you know, he calls it, it's not just an intellectual study and very difficult for the piano, but he imagined 23 different characters and many of them very strange and quirky. You know how you can't understand your neighbor sometimes? It's kind of like that. Uh, so you don't know who will appear on your, on your doorstep. And I'll follow that with another very fascinating, the way he wrote this variation is completely different. I won't give it away. He called it America the Beautiful, dot, 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 devastatingly quiet. And this is by Lei Liang distinguished professor in uh, University of San Diego.
Thank you. Uh, such a nice, wonderful, warm atmosphere and beautiful energy you're giving me. I think the concert is informal enough, maybe. We are all family now. We've shared this program together. I think I could take a few moments to maybe, maybe answer some questions. Shall we do a quick Q&A about the project or anything before I play last set of pieces to close the program? Anybody? Yes, sir. So the America Beautiful, I neglected to mention, I wonder if it's in the program, uh, was actually written by the music director of Newark Grace Church. Um, and so Newark's Grace Church is where one of the places I filmed the premieres. Samuel Ward was his name. And interestingly enough, the, the words were written first by Kathy Bates uh, after her very inspiring trip to Colorado. Um, Rumor has it that she was coming out of a very bad depression herself, and the trip was so invigorating that it helped her to write these beautiful words. And then many years later, Sam Ward wrote a very beautiful hymnal. Actually, it was first called Matera, meaning mother, and it became the music for America the Beautiful, and the two never met. Anything else? Yes. Yes, good question. So maybe people at home cannot hear the questions, so I will repeat. So uh, was the process, did I talk to the composers? Did anyone come back? Did I give any guidelines, or did anyone want to do it differently at some point? So very good question. I think the pandemic afforded me, actually, to all of us, for all of us to not have to meet in person. I actually would not have imagined doing something of this scope. I actually was going to stop at 50, and then... <laughs> You know, I was Zooming every day, calling, Zooming, emailing, and we were talking, and then the ideas just kept developing. There was, interestingly enough, one composer who is not in the set. Mm, I haven't told this to anyone, so it's our secret. <laughs> He's very famous, um, but he told me, forget everybody else, just pay me $20,000. I'll write you all the variations you need. Sadly, I wish I was making this up, but you know, and I said, but you're missing the whole point of the project. It's not about you. <laughs> because truly, it, the, the mission was that, that all these amazing composers, you know, musicians, ego, uh, they come together for a united project like this, and they can lend their talent even with two, three minutes, you know, yes, some people wanted to write longer, you know, I was inspired. My guideline was such that just be yourself, express whatever you, is on your mind. It could have some um, reference to the melody, or it couldn't, you know? I, so it was very free and very open like that. So I shared with you some examples of where you can recognize the tune, right? I started out with those, and then there are a lot of modern, really out there pieces where you really couldn't. I saved you today by not playing pieces that where I am like jumping on the piano, playing clusters with my elbows. Um, <laughs> do it? Oh, well, I don't think Steinway would be very happy if I come back, maybe. Um, so, yes. So thank you very much. I'm going to close now with a fun collection, maybe. Um, it's by Greg Sando, who wrote America's 50s doo-wop. Um, what do you call that? Um, you'll, you'll recognize it. And then um, spiritually inclined musical, The Most Glorious Grace. And I think I want to attempt something. It's a Caribbean flavor. It's by Trevor Weston, and it's simply called American Fantasy. Um, yeah, fun three pieces. Thank you very much for being such a wonderful audience here and at home. You know, I'm a 
forever Jersey girl at heart, and it was so beautiful. Tomorrow I fly to Dallas, but it was such a privilege and lucky me to come drive 20 minutes to come play for you and meet you all. Thank you.
Thank you very much. There was, you know, it was my first time trying iPad. I don't know if you noticed. There was some mal dysfunction there. Uh, <laughs> but that's the life of show business. Um, so I'm going to come back to the, uh, the old fashioned style uh, and want to leave you uh, on a better note. Uh, this is a fun encore for you. It's a habanera by John Musto. Wow. Thank you all for coming out. Um, what a brilliant program and what a fascinating program and uh, what a great contribution to the American cultural scene that she has created with this project. So I, I am so pleased to have been a part of that even in a tiny, tiny way. And I hope you are just as excited to be a part of that uh, because these pieces are being written by the leading composers of their day. They are going to be uh, in the books for for centuries now. So it's, it's really great to be able to be there. You know, like, I was there when... Um, um, kind of moment. Um, folks, uh, please take note of the other concerts that are coming up to complete our season. We return in January. On January 23rd, we'll have Shirley Hunt, who is a period viola de gambist and cellist, um, and she'll be accompanied by Sylvia Berry, who's playing historical keyboard. So it's a very, very different, the opposite end of the spectrum. Today we heard all new music. This is very, very not music that you'll be, new music you'll be hearing on January. So please come check that out. Uh, we'll have the Westerlies. Um, the Westerlies is a fantastic brass quartet that is not from Westfield. But I thought it's just too good of a name to not have them. They are they are fantastic. You're going to love them. They'll be in uh, March on March 27th, and we are going to be concluding. Hopefully, God willing, um, we'll be able to sing uh, as a group unmasked in in performance up here with our annual spring concert, which will be on Sunday, May 15th. I will announce uh, that we are planning on Mendelssohn's Lobgesang, which is the Symphony Number no. Two, uh, an epic cantata work. So uh, do plan for that. Um, 
On your way out, grab a program. Please consider talk, uh, making a donation. Again, this series could not exist without generous support from you guys. Thanks to the folks at Steinway. Thanks to the folks at St. Paul's for making this happen. Thank you. Be safe. We'll see you in January. A quick note that my board members, to please stick around just saying that out loud.